Warning, this video contains spoilers for The Last of Us Part 2 just in the commentary, not in the visual presentation. So please let this serve as your first and only warning. The Last of Us Part 2 quickly went from being one of the most anticipated games of this generation with a largely a positive reception leading up to its release to a polarizing title. This is largely due to the game's massive leaks that revealed critical information about the game's story. Many people who've seen the leaks are disappointed with Naughty Dog for this direction and while none of this has been fully confirmed since the game is not available to the public, Naughty Dog and Sony's actions by copyright claiming content talking about the leaks have indirectly confirmed them. Regardless, this game shouldn't be judged entirely on these leaks, but instead by the final product. Hopefully you'll watch the entire video before making your judgement, or not, it's up to you, but this is my defense for The Last of Us Part 2. But first, let me do a little experiment. I want you to write your argument in the comments below, establish it, and by the end of the video choose to edit it or keep it as it is. I want to see if my point had any effect on your views. First off, I understand why a lot of people are upset with the direction of The Last of Us Part 2 based on the leaks. They're vexing. Even I'm annoyed about this information and hope, even though that hope is very little, that none of it is true. However, let's assume that the leaks are 100% true for the sake of the video. The story and the gameplay leading up to those critical moments have not been shown and that's a major issue. Take the first The Last of Us. The central story was cliché, a zombie apocalypse in the way of a fungi infection spreads across the world and humanity's salvation lies in the hands of Ellie, who happens to be immune. Joel must travel across America to give Ellie to the Firefly settlement, the Fireflies being a separate organization searching for a cure to the Cordyceps infection because it was the final wish of his lover and partner, Tess. The reason this journey was so profound was because of the relationship of Ellie and Joel developed along the way. The strong writing, character performance helped many players ignore the linear level structure and bland story elements because it was so strong. Leading up to a profound conclusion where Joel's actions can be interpreted as either selfish or heroic. Saving Ellie, but in turn may have doomed all of humanity and killed a lot of doctors in a world where doctors are probably even more precious than they've ever been. Everything that transpired leading up to not only the ending, but every critical situation made these cutscenes more profound. Whether it was Ellie telling Joel how she felt about him abandoning her with Tommy, or Joel hugging Ellie after she killed Daniel. These scenes were amplified because of everything that led to that moment, gameplay and story. That being said, now we come to The Last of Us Part 2. The leaks confirmed several critical pieces of information, the most hated being Joel's death at the hands of Abby. Abby was the child of a surgeon Joel killed at the end of the first game and since then she has dedicated herself to killing Joel and is successful. She forces Ellie to watch and in turn creates the cycle of revenge with Ellie starting her warpath to kill Abby and her group by any means. During the halfway point, players take control of Abby and hunt down Ellie, and this is where people are considerably annoyed. Players have been controlling and building a relationship with Ellie for the entire game, DLC, and if the rumors are taken as fact, half of The Last of Us Part 2. This is a fitting reaction, considering you've been playing as someone who killed a critical character that was admired by the fanbase and now is actively hunting another admirable character within the fanbase. This has to be done correctly. In other games, playing as the antagonist has been extremely positive. For example, Halo 2, where players took control of the Arbiter for the first time, a failed general who was stripped of his rank and identity during the events of Halo 2 and given the title. As the Arbiter, he was the Hierarch's personal soldier charged with taking on covert suicidal missions. There was a lot more lore to this, but for the sake of this argument, I won't touch onto it, but there are winkies that establish who the Arbiter is, including the history that led up to him becoming the Arbiter, including past Arbiters. During this section, we were able to see the Human Covenant War from the Covenant perspective and see they were a victim of manipulation from the Hierarch's misinterpretation of the Forerunner's messages about the Great Journey. By playing as the Arbiter, the player gains a connection with him and his people, providing a more profound relationship with the player so when he and Master Chief joined forces at the end of the game, it was earned. Suddenly this character, who would otherwise be the villain, is now seen as the player as someone he can connect to and someone you can sympathize with. 
This is where The Last of Us Part 2 could fail or succeed in that same regard. If Naughty Dog is able to make a case through the performance of these characters to make Abby into a sympathetic character, maybe Naughty Dog can execute this. It's extremely difficult and all the cards are against them, especially after the leaks, but it's not impossible. After all, Joel and Ellie are not good people. Joel is a murderous person and that's his main job after the outbreak, killing and enforcing. Ellie isn't any better. She kills without mercy. There are no good people in this world, just survivors and that's what The Last of Us establishes. People here value the relationships they have between each other than the greater good of the world. But you're probably saying, you know, that's not the problem. It's the player playing as someone who killed a character who players admired. That is the issue. That is a valid point. Playing as someone you hate will sour the experience and make getting through the game that more annoying. But what if you were made to see through the eyes of Abby? Her father was killed by this man. She has nothing left. As seen in The Last of Us and The Last of Us Left Behind, these profounding connections, whether they're family, friends, or lovers, are all these people have, and if that's destroyed, their world might as well have been destroyed. Losing that means losing a part of yourself, and without a system of justice, you have to make your own. In this case, you have to make those who wronged you suffer, and in this case, Abby's world was destroyed the second Joel decided to kill her father. Now, there is one very sensitive topic that I haven't touched on, but I try to infuse it into the argument as much as possible to try and make it coherent. But I just found out it was really just pandering to something that I found to be a trivial ob objection within this article. However, there is a brilliant video from another YouTuber called Upper Echelon Gamer that does touch on that subject. And the topic is Abby being a transgendered person. So I will leave a link in the description for that video. But to me, that argument won't support my argument as much. And it would just be just me padding the video out. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Anyway, if you made it to the end of this video, I applaud you. In fact, thank you so much for hearing me out. And I would love to hear your opinion on the matter. Are you planning to get The Last of Us Part 2 or not? Did your opinion change from the start of this video? Or have you remained unchanged and still decided that this is how you feel about The Last of Us Part 2? Whether you feel positive or negative. Again, in the comments below, I'd love to hear your opinion. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Stay awesome, everyone.